Oh boy. Hey everybody, Reef Girl here and welcome to my channel. Let's start with a quick unboxing of the Orfec OR2 LED light. I got the 120 centimeter version. It's about 48 inches. I got it direct from the manufacturer because they're not generally available yet at retail. So I'm unboxing them side by side because one box arrived open and I was concerned about missing parts. In the end, there were no missing parts, so it was all good. Why am I getting these? Well, I just don't like how the T5s look. I never have. The colors look flat. I can't get filters that make them look natural when I'm trying to, to record video. And I just thought I'd give these a try. There are a couple of color choices and the color I chose was Blue Plus. And of course, as soon as I got it unpacked, I wanted to plug it in and see what it looks like. It's pretty spectacular. This set of LEDs ranges in wavelength from 410 nanometers to 495. I chose Blue Plus because it includes very low wavelength lights, near UV if you will, and that helps a lot with coral growth. I was fortunate to receive Generation 2 of these lights, which were recently redesigned to improve corrosion resistance. A 5mm thick tempered glass cover protects the lenses and it's all put together in an extruded aluminum grey housing. Very sleek and industrial looking. I love it. A wire hanging kit and mounting brackets were included with the light. And to minimize messing around with what I already had installed, we looked for a way to use the existing bracket that held the T5s along with this inverted V-shaped hook and the wires that go to the ceiling. Before I show you that, it's time to say bye-bye T5s. And of course, what better opportunity to give this light a really good cleaning. The cleaner it stays, the longer the life, because if that fan gets too dirty and starts to run hot and burns out, then it's a problem. So I cleaned it all up and it was well worth the effort. Modifying the hanging brackets was simple and straightforward. The brackets already had two places where bolts could be put through, so we took a piece of strapping, basically painted it black, and drilled straight down through those two access places, down through the wood, and then fastened a long bolt with a nut underneath. This holds the bracket securely onto that wood. These are two-part adjustable brackets that came with the light. The other half of these brackets is attached to the light housing. And here's what that looks like all assembled. You can see on the wood is that bracket, and then that's attached to the part that's actually slid into a groove on the top of the housing. The nuts and bolts are set up so that the lights can actually be tilted, and that's what I meant by adjustable. So if I want to tilt the lights slightly inwards towards the center of the tank so that I'm not looking directly at LEDs when they're on, I can do that. And it was so simple to just put the hooks in and hang them. I have them set up with the cords at the left because that's where they're getting plugged in. So all I need to do now is plug them into the timer, which luckily has two outlets, and I'll be good to go. And here we are. Woohoo! There they go. I was pretty excited the first time I saw them come on, I can tell you. So let me give you a few details about the actual lights and what the availability is. There are currently three sizes, with a fourth coming soon. The three sizes are 60 centimeters, 24 inches, 90 centimeters, 36 inches, and 120 centimeters, 48 inches. That's the one I got. Coming soon, over the next couple of months, will be 150 centimeters, which is 60 inches. 
And regarding availability, at present they're available directly from Orfec. I'll leave a link to their website in the description below. A lot of what I'm telling you here will also be on their website. And here are a couple of details that were especially interesting for me and I thought I'd share with you. First of all, build quality. You can see from what I'm showing you here, details of how these things are put together and the quality that has gone into them. The cords are an excellent length. The cord that's actually attached to the fixture is about 19 inches long. The cord that plugs into that that leads to the power supply is 39 inches. Then we've got the power supply which is about 6 inches long. Out of that comes a 15 inch cord that leads to the toggle switch. On the other side of the toggle switch is another 39 inches of cord before you reach the plug. That is a really generous length of cable and allows a lot of flexibility to set these things up pretty much however you want and wherever you want. And while we're talking about cords, let me tell you some breaking news directly from the manufacturer. They're currently working on dimmers. These will be in line between the cord that's attached to the light and the cord that goes to the power supply. They will be Wi-Fi enabled, so could be controlled with an app. This is awesome news because this compares really well to other lights of this type on the market. And speaking of other lights on the market, I did compare other types of bar lights. Well, one other type, because in Canada, there is only one other type of this sort of bar light available to us. And the cost of those lights would have been more than double what I paid for the Orfec lights. I should make it clear that I bought the Orfec lights with my own money. They were not given to me and I was not sponsored in any way. But oh my goodness, I love these things. They're amazing. And for the money, I don't think you can go wrong. At the moment, they have international shipping included in the price. These lights cost $160 US each. That price included shipping to Canada, to my house. So the total for both lights ended up being $455 Canadian. So it's fine for me to talk about what great value for money these lights are and the high quality. And you can see from the shots I'm showing you of my tank how everything looks. What's really important though about lights is, will they work? Will they do what they're supposed to do to help grow corals? So to address that, we talk a little bit about PAR and PUR, P-A-R and P-U-R. In really basic terms, P-A-R, PAR, is photosynthetic active radiation. And it's basically how much light is there. PER, on the other hand, is kind of a subset of PAR. It's spectrum. It's the part of the spectrum that the corals need to grow. PUR means photosynthetic usable radiation. PER is expressed as a percentage of PAR. Basically, what percentage of the available light is in the correct spectrum for the corals to use? There's some very interesting information on Orifex website about PER and PAR. And it turns out that the PER of these lights is roughly 83%. And what that means is 83% of the light put out by these lights in terms of the PAR is in the usable spectrum for coral growth. And from what I've been able to learn, how this compares with other lights 83% is very impressive. I'll leave a link in the description to Orfex website. All I did was contact them via their website contact form. I'll include a direct contact email in the description. Pricing on their website is current as far as I know. However, it is pre-launch pricing and it may change in future. If you're interested in the 150 centimeter light or the dimmer, they aren't in production yet. And to get on a mailing list, just contact Tom at Orifec directly and let him know the product you're interested in. Once on the list, you'll be in the loop and will be notified when product is available for sale. 
For me at this point, I love looking at my tank under these lights. So even if the coral growth is equal to T5s, that's fine with me because I love what I'm seeing. was pushed right up against the scoli when I came in here tonight and look at the scoli that is attacking filaments so I don't know push this guy right away but there's still a lot of the scoli filaments stuck to it poor thing well I think might have got lucky here because although the Cinerina is definitely wounded, it's not otherwise looking like it's in any distress. The Scoli, of course, yeah, showing no signs of any problem. <sighs> I might have to glue this Cinerina on a huge rock that cannot be scooted across the front into the other coral. Asshole. Yeah, you, you did that, silly fish. Yeah, look at these two looking all innocent, as if they didn't just have a big fight. No sign of anything on the scoli. He's put his stomach away, and the Cinerina shows pretty much zero signs of any problem. It'll probably eventually just be fine. So I got lucky. I think I managed to discover it by accident very, very shortly after it started to happen. So I'm, uh, I'm pretty thankful that I didn't lose one or both.